Hello, welcome to Maths with J. Here we're going to be finding the least residue of a number. In fact, what we'll do is we'll look at two examples. First of all, we'll start with a small example, small number, and then we'll look at a much bigger one. So what we're really doing here when we're looking for a least residue is we're looking to find the remainder when dividing. So let's start with a, uh, a small example. So we'll look at 7 to the power of 3 and we're going to have a look at this in modulo 50. So we want to know what this is equal to in modulo 50, what this is congruent to. So what it means is we want to know when we divide 7 cubed by 50, what is the remainder? So with such a small number, you can use your calculator to actually just write down what this is equal to or even work it out in your head. 7 cubed is 343. And if you divide that by 50, you'll find that the remainder is 43. So that's saying that in mod 50, in modulo 50, 7 cubed is congruent to 43. So that's the least residue of the number in modulo 50. Now for the next example we're going to look at, it's going to be more difficult to do because you wouldn't be able to key the number into the calculator, so you'd need to use a different approach. So what we'll do here is we'll have a look at how to use that approach on this particular example. So I could write 7 cubed as 7 squared multiplied by 7. And the reason I've done that is because I know that 7 squared is equal to 49. And that's useful because that, if I subtract 50 from it, you can see it's con that's congruent to mod, that's congruent to minus 1 mod 50. So what we can do here is when we're looking for what 7 cubed is congruent to, if we write it to 7 squared times 7, we can see that if we replace the 7 squared by the negative 1, so now we're looking at congruence, so we're in mod 50, then we've got that 7 cubed is negative 1 multiplied by 7. It's congruent to that. So simplifying that, Doing the multiplication, we've got negative 7 mod 50. And if we add 50 to negative 7, we get 43. So I know this probably looks a bit long-winded, but it will help you to understand what we're going to do when we look at the next example. So now we want to know what happens when we've got 7 to the power of 329? So we want to know what the least residue is in modulo 50. So earlier on we saw that 7 squared was congruent to negative 1. And now that we've got such a huge number, it will be useful to uh, multiply this up. So if 7 squared is congruent to negative 1, then 7 to the power of 4 is congruent to 1 because negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 is 1. So that's going to be very useful. Another way of working this out is just to write down what 7 to the power of 4 is as a number and it's 2401 and so you can see that when you divide that by 50 you've got a remainder of 1. Right, so what we want to do with this example, if you've already tried you'll see that 7 to the power of 329 is probably far too big to evaluate on your calculator. So what we're going to do here is look at writing the power, looking at writing the 329 in terms of 4, so that we can use 7 to the power of 4 being congruent to 1. So we can say that 7 to the power of 329 is equal to 7 to the power of 4 times 82 plus 1 and therefore in fact that's just equals in the first line isn't it let's just uh, change that right so we can write this as 7 that's for 7 to the power of 1 multiplied by 7 to the power of 4 to the power of 82 
So there I've just rewritten 7 to the power of 329 in terms of 7 to the power of 4. So now we can say that that's congruent to 7 times, well 7 to the power of 4 is congruent to 1, so we've got 1 to the power of 82, and of course 1 to the power of anything is 1, and I should have put a mod 50 in here, shouldn't I? And so now we can say, well that's just congruent to 7 times 1, in other words just 7. So we have found, without having to do very much work at all, that when we divide 7 to the power of 329 by 50, we get a remainder of 7.